Hello friends and welcome. I'm so glad you could be with me today because we're going to have some fun trying a new foundation application technique which is said to produce absolutely flawless results. And since a flawless look is something I think most of us definitely wouldn't mind creating on our more mature skin, especially if it's pretty quick and easy, I thought it would definitely be worth a try today. This technique was demonstrated recently by a YouTuber I'm sure many of you know and love, Marlena Stell. She was the founder of Makeup Geek Cosmetics line. But since she's considerably younger than I am, I wanted to see if this technique would work for those of us with a few more decades behind us. Before we launch into this technique, let me welcome back those of you who are already part of this family, and also welcome those of you who might be stopping by for the very first time. My name is Elise, and as a working professional makeup artist whose passion is helping those of us over 50 look like the very best version of ourselves, I love sharing makeup tips, techniques, and product information that can help us look and feel more confident. And from time to time, we also talk fashion and wellness. So if these types of videos sound like something you might enjoy, I hope you'll subscribe before you leave today and also hit that bell icon so you'll be notified each time a new video is available. Now let's get to today's topic. The good news is that with this flawless foundation technique, I'm really going to be doing only one thing differently in my makeup routine. I'll be applying a brand new product on just part of my face before I apply my foundation. So I've done what I normally do before applying my makeup. I've exfoliated my skin to get rid of dead skin cells so my skin looks brighter. I've applied my usual face serums and moisturizers and also my eye makeup. So for my face makeup, I'm first going to apply one of my favorite face primers from makeup artist Eve Pearl. It's her Priming Moisturizer Treatment. And this one I love especially because it is so moisturizing and feels fantastic on the skin. And even though I've moisturized, this just melts into my skin. It does have a very slight scent, and I'm not one who particularly enjoys fragrances, but it really doesn't bother me at all. And it really dissipates after just a few minutes. Oh, it feels so good. Taking care of those dark circles under my eyes comes next. So I'll next apply my Smashbox Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector and then my Under Eye Concealer from Kosas. And I have definitely not been getting the kind of sleep I'd like to be getting lately. And I'm sure some of you can identify with that. So this under eye corrector is really a must for me. And even if I do get a good night's sleep, those dark circles still seem to hang around. And I'm just going to pat it in. And this color corrector really needs to be in a peach or a salmon color and how dark you get really depends on how dark your skin is. I go with a fairly light color, but you can find these correctors in every different shade from very light to very deep. I particularly like this Kosas concealer because it is brightening. Now comes the step that does all the magic. Before I apply my foundation, I'm going to highlight just the center of my face with this white concealer from RCMA. RCMA stands for the Research Council of Makeup Artists. And as you can see, all the different colors in here can be used to change what our foundation looks like, to lighten it, to brighten it, to deepen it. I'll apply it with a soft sponge under my eyes, along the side of my nose, outward toward the outer edge of my eye and also down just under my nose. So I'm just going to tap it in and then I'm just going to dot it. Now I know this is looking a little bit bizarre, but we just have to hang on to see the final result. Okay, I think I have about the same amount on both sides. Next, I'm going to apply the white concealer on the center of my forehead, on my chin, and down the center of my nose. And this is actually reverse contouring. 
So often when you contour, you apply light down the center of your face, but you do it after you apply your foundation. And then you also apply a dark contour. And we're going to get to the dark contour a little bit later. But this is the important part to do this under the foundation. Okay, this is looking pretty bizarre, but we'll see what happens. So this white concealer is really going to be a great base that will cover all my redness and brighten the center of my face. I'll apply my foundation next and I'm going to use my Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation since I want to use a foundation that has a little bit of glow to it. I put two pumps on my brush and I'm just going to put it all over where I normally apply it. I'm just going to press it in first. And then I'm going to buff it in. So when I applied the foundation and patted it in and then buffed it in, it really just melted in with the white concealer. To give my face some dimension, I'll next use my Makeup Revolution Ultra Creamy Bronzer, which I'm going to be using as my contour. And I'm going to place it under my cheekbones, along and under my jawline, and across my forehead. And I'm just going to tap it on first with this setting powder brush from Real Techniques. And that's because it's easy to get way too much of this color. So I'm going to start back here, and then blend it in. And as you can see, that gives a nice natural look, not too heavy. And basically, I'm just going in with two pats onto that bronzer. And then under my jawline. And along the top of my forehead. And I'm only putting this on my forehead because I have a very high forehead. And then, as always, I'm taking my foundation brush and going over the edges to get rid of any harsh lines. Next, I'm going to apply some pink setting powder to the areas where I applied the white contour. Today, I'm going to be using my e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder in pink and apply it by pressing it in with my Beauty Blender Puff. Now, I just want to use very little, so I'm putting a little bit in the cap and then I'm pressing the puff into it. And I'm just going to pat it over where I applied that white powder. And I use just the very tiniest amount. It's important to use a pink setting powder since it lightens the skin and it adds more brightness as well. For blush, I'm going with my Patrick Ta Powder and Cream Blush Combination in the color She's a Doll. This is his palette with three different blush colors in it, which is no longer available, but each of these can be purchased separately now. I'm first applying the powder, which is pretty pigmented, so I'm just using a tiny amount at first, and I can always build it up. And you'll notice where I'm placing it. This really helps give us a little bit of lift. I also like bringing it around just slightly up over my brows. Then I'm taking some of the cream on my finger and I'm just going to pat it over. And I really love the beautiful soft look this gives. And then once again with my foundation brush, this becomes just a wonderful blending tool. I'll apply my lipstick off camera and I'll be right back. So I want to do one more step that Marlena didn't do. I want to apply some of my hourglass powder and blush over my face. I'll be applying the light color in the center top over my cheeks and forehead. And then I'll be using the blush in the far right bottom. And what this does is just meld all my makeup together. And since I usually use this, I wanted to make sure I used it on top of this new application technique. And then a little bit of blush. 
And if you get too much, like I just did here, you can go back over it with the powder. Then I'm going to use my Cali Ray Surf Proof Setting Spray, and I'm just going to spray it onto my sponge and then pat it in. This is especially wonderful to use in the summer to keep your makeup in place when we're more likely to sweat and see it moving a little bit more. But I do it year round. And also you can do it in between makeup routine steps to help really ensure your makeup stays in place. So we now have the final look. Hopefully my skin will look like skin. The makeup won't look too thick and heavy and the foundation will look flawless. So let's zoom in and take a close up look. Now I have to say, when I was looking in the mirror doing my lipstick a little bit earlier, I did notice that the concealer seemed to emphasize my pores here. I was using, of course, a very strong magnifying mirror to see that. So I'm going to look up close at this mirror, which doesn't quite magnify as much, but I want to see if I still see those pores being emphasized. You know, I really don't see the same thing I saw in my extra strength magnifying mirror, but it may be because of using that damp sponge with a setting spray. That may have picked up some of the powder and concealer, so it got rid of that look. But it would be great if you could tell me what you're seeing when I do these close-ups, because I won't be able to see them until I edit this video later. So I hope you will let me know in the comments section below if you feel this application technique did create a flawless foundation look on my very mature skin. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that thumbs up icon. I look forward to getting together with you again next Thursday. And until then, I wish you good health and happiness. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Take care.